All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the 2021 Games User Research Salary Survey. I'm here with Andrew Manger Ogle, and we're going to talk hello. to you about salaries. Uh, we're doing a, a slightly abridged version this year, but we'll be putting up all the stuff on the Discord, uh, so you'll be able to see some more of the data and dig through it yourself if you like. But let's jump right in. Uh, so some notes. Super happy to announce this year we put a little bit more effort into getting the survey out there. And we increased the number of respondents from 172 to 237. So that's a, that's a pretty big uh, leap, which we're happy about. And also the number of qualified responses was also quite high um, of responses that, you know, that, that were high enough quality to continue through to the analysis. Um, continuing, let's talk right away about location. So some more good news. This is the best spread we've had of respondents around the world. Uh, points to two things for me. That one, that the sort of gerrymandering that we've been doing of rigging the, the provinces and states and countries to try to make them a little bit more even has worked. We're getting pretty good representation in all of the locations. And also in the rest of the world and in Europe, we're seeing some growth there. Maybe time to split some of those up. Uh, to me, that points to either the survey reaching more people, which is you know a little bit good, or more games user researchers around the world, which is a lot good. I'm very happy about that. Um, looking at salary by location now, uh, so obviously location every year, the number one predictor of salary, right? It's the most important factor in terms of how much money you can make. Uh, I am happy also to say this year that it looks like a small bump across the world. Uh, you know, all the salaries went up lightly, uh, compared to last year. And so, um, that's good news. Looking at junior salaries, also a, uh, a small bump around the world in most locations. Uh, it's worth noting that that huge number in Northern California, I looked into it and all of the juniors hired in California this year had PhDs. So very stringent hiring requirements in San Francisco, I guess. Uh, but that explains why that number is, is so much larger than the rest. When we look at education, um, you can see that about half of games user researchers have a salary degree. And this is one of the most popular questions we always get is, you know, is my doctorate or my PhD worth uh, money when I go into industry? And the answer to this uh, shows yes. Uh, there is, there, you will be paid uh, a bit more if you have a PhD than if you have either a master's or a bachelor's. When we look at experience in years, the interesting part of this slide is the number of uh, new researchers, so that's people with zero to one years of experience, is drastically lower this year. Uh, and I would likely attribute that to the pandemic. People slowed down hiring of um, you know, people fresh out of school, probably because onboarding and training got so much more difficult. So hopefully we see that number next year uh, swing back to where it was uh, you know, as companies start to figure out remote onboarding and or the pandemic ends and we can all go back to our wonderful normal lives. When we look at gender, more good news here. Um, this number is, is pretty incredible, right? 44% uh, women in the games user research discipline that answered our survey. Uh, that's significantly higher than the IGDA average uh, and, a, and a good sign, I think, for our discipline and, and the work that we're doing, um, being able to attract a more diverse group. And then when we look at um, the question was phrased, you know, underrepresented group included, uh, women, minorities, um, uh, uh, I'm forgetting exactly the wording, but it was uh, uh, sexual orientation and a couple of other factors. Uh, and so it makes up like a fairly large group. Obviously, that's not monolithic. Like the nose, the red side there is mostly cisgendered white men, whereas on the right, that's a bunch of different types of people. Um, but it is nice to see that it is, uh, you know, that we, we are... Uh, quite diverse when it comes to that. And the best news of this whole slide is that neither of these uh, questions appeared to affect the, the model. They did not factor in to the amount that people are paid in any meaningful way. And so, uh, I mean, uh, you know, that's something that I think I've been proud every year to say that uh, gender didn't seem to contribute to the pay model. And this year that we can add in underrepresented status, I think is another thing that we can be really proud of as an industry and the way that we operate and pay our people. And with that, uh, the last slide that I'm gonna talk about real quick is one that always, uh, I'm always happy to show as well is here the satisfaction. So four and five games researchers are happy. And for the first time this year, we have zero respondents saying that they're very dissatisfied. 
And so overall, you know, we're a group of people uh, kind to one another. We're pretty good with one another. We're all pretty happy. And, you know, I think if there is some silver lining at the end of this pandemic is that, uh, you know, we're all pretty cool. I'm happy to work with every one of you. Andrew, let's talk model. I know you've got some I'm happy to work model this year. And I'm yeah, excited. I'm happy to work with you too, Johnny. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, you know, because again, this is sort of an abridged version, I won't be going into all the details about how regression works like I did last year. If you're curious about that, please check out the video from last year. Um, but, you know, all of those percentage differences, those bar charts that you saw at the beginning of the presentation, all those um, findings came out of this analysis. So we did uh, two regression models. One was for the base salary and one was for the base salary plus the um, any kind of uh, bonus and other kinds of compensation. So it's base salary, total compensation. And then how we prepare those, um, the outcome variable, uh, we take all of those salaries that are reported in different currencies, we convert them all into US dollars. And then because um, salary income is not a um, normally distributed variable, it's very skewed, did a log linear transformation. And so that was um, how I was able to do these lin multiple linear models um okay and then for how do i how do i build these out how do i decide like which order the predictors go in i just made a single linear model um, for base salary and total compensation including each of the predictors i put them in order of r square from largest to smallest and that was how i decided which um, predictors to add at each subsequent step. One difference here was age. So age was last year the second biggest predictor. This year was also the second biggest predictor. But as I was thinking about it, I thought, you know, theoretically, age should not be uh, a meaningful predictor of pay on its own, you know, maybe as a proxy for experience or something else. So for that reason, I, even though it was such a, it had such a big um, R square on its own, I put it at the end of the model because I was curious to see once we have everything else there, is there anything left that age is contributing to it? Um, and so, you know, once I came up with that order, I built those models, and then I saw what the cutoff was for when we stopped getting additional variance explained. So we'll look at the next slide. And that is going to show the order there. So we went region, and then age went to the bottom. But So region, again, that's accounting for half of the variance in pay right there. Um, position. So junior, senior, and, and you know management, that's included there. So that added another 20% um, of variance. Then we have years of UR experience. A difference here compared to last year is not only are we looking at um, games user research experience, we're also looking at um, non-games user research experience. So it's, it's a kind of a more robust measure of experience this year. Um, education. This year, uh, we did not exclude people who only had um, high school degrees. We, um, high school and bachelor's, that's all part of the same category. Organization type, um, I think we didn't split out platform and publisher last year. This year we did. Contractor status is new. So that's not to be confused with freelancer. That's just if you said that you were employed as a contractor uh, at a business, that's what that is. Um, Work function, primary work function. So these were like, are you a researcher? Are you um, in management? Are you a UX designer? Or you do, do you do analytics? Um, that had a statistically significant p-value, but as I looked into it, there were some, um, some sort of like violations of assumptions that we need to do this analysis. And so I just omitted that one. It, it didn't feel right to include it. And then uh, gender represented, underrepresented and age all fell out, weren't meaningful contributors. So that's base salary. When we look next at the total, total compensation, the order at which those variables come in, it's the same order. And it's essentially the same model, just with different betas. And the ultimate adjusted R square, you know, with a base salary was around 79%. Here we're around like 75%. Next slide. Um, so what data were included in the model? I mean, it certainly helped this year um, that we had another 50 respondents that, uh, qualified to be in the model. I was very pleased about that. And then we did have some exclusion criteria that I'm, I'm listing there at the bottom. Um, I don't need to go through all those, but so you know. Next slide. Um, and then calculator notes. The calculator is back, um, forthcoming. Uh, we plan to put it up on the Grux website um, very soon, as soon as next week. 
And so please be on the lookout on the Discord channel for an announcement about that. And the same thing goes as last year, you will be able to interact with it um, live in the website, but that will be sort of a public instance of the uh, Google Sheet. So if you download it, you're gonna be able to you know, make those adjustments and, and, and make your calculations without anybody else seeing. You're also gonna have access to other um, sheets that I'm gonna include that will have like kind of those details about the model just so that, you know, um, trying to uh, improve the transparency this year so that people are, are knowing and understanding, able to see sort of like where these data are coming from. Again, it's not showing anybody like any individual's data, but it is showing just sort of the inner workings of the model itself. Um, again, same caveat as last year, it is possible to enter in nonsense data. So you could say you're a person with um, 80 years of experience, and uh, or that and you're a junior um, and it will it will give you a result but um, you know even though that's impossible that doesn't mean the model's wrong that just means um, you weren't you weren't being nice to the calculator so meet the calculator halfway and uh, it'll be good um, what else uh, you um, with the model all of the factors have to have a value so if you don't enter something it will default to something all right so make sure that you're um, intentionally entering in a value so that um, you know that it's all accurate. If if there's a value in there like that doesn't fit with your situation, try to find one that is approximate to it. Um, and then just uh, as a reminder, this model is not perfect. It's accounting for 79% uh, of the variance. And that means that there's 21% of variance that isn't accounted for. And that means it's gonna be inaccurate. Your Your salary or you know, if you're not employed yet, you want to know what your salary is, that future salary that you could hope to have is going to be higher, is going to be lower than what the, the model is predicting. Next slide. I, I guess that's it. I'll pass it back to you, Johnny. Yeah, that's what we got for the this year. So, you know, again, super happy to be able to contribute to the community with this data. Uh, you know, Seb, uh, Andrew, and I don't take this responsibility lightly. And every year we do our best to improve it. Uh, make it more useful. Um, we did do a shorter version this year, so please have a look at the slides when we post them on the Discord salary channel. Uh, ask us more questions. Um, and once again, thank you. And if you use this to make a little bit more money, got a little extra couple bucks in your pocket this year, thanks to the calculator, you're welcome. See you at the Gather Town party shortly. Take care. <laughs>